new allegations against John Diddy Combs. A music producer is accusing hip hop mogul of actually assaulting him and forcing him to have dudes. But a long junior settled accusations that he raped a woman in a New York City hotel a decade ago. Just as the drama around Diddy's lawsuits and lavish parties seem to quiet down, Rodney Jones, also known as Lil Rod Jones, has reignited the drama with a new lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs. This legal challenge comes from their collaboration on the Love album Off the Grid, filed in a New York federal court. Jones accuses Combs of serious illegal activity, including SA, and implicates not only Combs but also his son, Justin Dior Combs, and his team. This lawsuit adds a fresh, controversial layer to the ongoing narrative surrounding Diddy. So let's dive in. Rodney Jones, also known in the music industry as Lil Rod Jones, has filed a lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs, stemming from their work together on Combs' Love album. During the period from September 2022 to November 2023, Jones produced nine songs for the album and lived with Combs at various locations, including Los Angeles, New York City, Miami, and even on a yacht in the U.S. Virgin Islands. This experience, Jones alleges, exposed him to behaviors and situations that far exceeded his professional responsibilities as a producer. The lawsuit details a series of troubling allegations allegations against Combs and his associates, supported by witness statements, video and audio recordings, and images in Jones's possession. These allegations involve misconduct that Jones claims to have witnessed or been subjected to during his time with Combs. The complaint also mentions that Jones was often asked to record events and interactions, resulting in him having extensive evidence to support his claims. I've been working on an album. Um, I took a year off straight working on this album. That album is the Love album, Off the Grid by Diddy. Um, and it's Grammy nominated right now as we speak. Um, I should be um, celebrating, but the truth is I'm not. Taking this album on has required so much time, um, you know, months and at, at, at a time, 16 hours, 24 hours a day. Um, sometimes, you know, Diddy would request certain works to be done and tell us don't go to sleep until it's done. And, and the truth is, we'll be up for days trying to accomplish that. I've tried to get my business straight with them on this album, but the truth is they're not playing fair. They, they hit me on below the belt on so many situations, just 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 dealing with this. It's, it's, the contract that they gave me and the offer that they gave me was just disgusting. The, 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 the producer fee, pennies. And on top of that, these guys are trying to steal my publishing. I can't go for that. So I'm fighting back. He's a fighter, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to put in this fight. I got to do it for myself, my rights, and most importantly, my kids. Taking my publishing or stealing it, it's, it's just, it's, I'm not going to let that happen. Doing this situation is not easy. Taking Puff to court, suing him is not easy. I don't have... The, the, the monies that it's going to take to fight him in court. So I'm just asking, you know, if you if you want support, please, the link is in my bio to my GoFundMe. Um, the, the money we go, will go towards my attorney fees and to just make sure I'm keeping my head above water. Jones's lawsuit not only names Combs, but also implicates members of his staff and some associates in various alleged activities. The suit aims to bring these issues to light, seeking accountability for the actions described. This legal action underscores the serious nature of the allegations and the importance of addressing them within the legal system. And that's just a quick overview of the lawsuit. Let's look closer at a really intense moment that happened at a music camp run by Mr. Combs at the Chalice Recording Studio in Los Angeles. This part of the story involves Mr. Combs, his son Justin, and Justin's friend Mr. G getting into a serious situation. They were there with other musicians and people making music together. One night, a big argument in the studio spilled over into a nearby restroom. Rodney Jones was just a couple of feet away when suddenly gunshots broke out. The shock of possibly being hit made Jones really scared. After things went quiet, people were unsure whether to go near the restroom. When the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and his son came out, leaving Mr. G hurt and bleeding on the floor. While everyone else was just standing around, Jones quickly went to help Mr. G, 
trying his best to stop the bleeding by pressing down on his wounds. Jones knew they needed help fast, so he called for an ambulance and helped Mr. G get to it, even as Mr. Combs and his son quickly left the area. After everything calmed down, Mr. Combs told everyone to tell the police a different story, saying Mr. G was hurt in a drive-by shooting, not by anything that happened at inside. Jones didn't stop there. He's found several people who saw what happened and are willing to talk about it, but they're scared of what Mr. Combs might do. They've said they'll speak up if the court asks them to. Jones also kept the clothes he wore that day, which still have Mr. G's blood on them, and could prove what really happened. He even has photos showing the mess after the shooting, which might help prove if Mr. Combs or his son was behind it. This bunch of evidence, along with what the witnesses might say later, makes Jones's case stronger. It shows how serious the shooting was and how far some might go to hide the truth. This this part of the lawsuit really shows the danger of that night and how important it is to make sure everyone involved is held responsible. Adding to the story, it's clear that Mr. G's shooting didn't happen outside the studio like Mr. Combs wanted everyone to tell the police. Instead, everything went down right inside the place where they were all supposed to be creating music. The camp had its own security team, but they weren't doing a great job. The fact that Mr. Combs and his son could bring guns into the studio without anyone stopping them shows a big failure. The security was supposed to keep everyone safe, including Jones and the others there to work on music music, but they let this dangerous situation happen. Because of this scary incident, Jones has been going through a really tough time. He's now dealing with PTSD, which means he's often feeling very scared or stressed even when there's no danger. He's also facing severe anxiety, feeling sad and depressed, and having trouble sleeping. All of this adds up to show just how much the shooting and everything around it has hurt him, not just physically but also mentally and emotionally. And that's just one section in this lawsuit. During his time with Mr. Combs, Rodney Jones faced a series of uncomfortable and unwelcome situations. Jones reports that Mr. Combs behaved inappropriately towards him, not respecting his personal space. These incidents weren't limited to one place. They happened in various locations, including LA, New York, Florida, and the Virgin Islands. Jones was also put in awkward work conditions, where he had to be in the same room while Mr. Combs had no clothes on. This made Jones, who values his personal and religious beliefs, feel very uncomfortable. He even tried to express how he felt to Mr. Combs' chief of staff, hoping for some understanding or change. However, the response he got was dismissive suggesting that this behavior was just part of Mr. Combs' personality. Attempts were made to downplay the seriousness of the situation, calling it playful behavior, but for Jones, these actions were far from playful or acceptable. Jones felt that this pattern of behavior was not only inappropriate, but also part of a bigger issue with how Mr. Combs interacts with others. He believes that these actions were an attempt to normalize behavior that was clearly unacceptable to him. This part of his experience with Mr. Combs has had a significant impact on him, contributing to the overall challenging environment he found himself in while working on the low album. Next is when Rodney Jones shares how Mr. Combs used his knowledge of Jones's professional admiration to influence him inappropriately. Jones looked up to Stevie J, a well-known music producer and television personality who was also involved in the production of the Love album. Mr. Combs, aware of this admiration, attempted to manipulate Jones by presenting the music industry in a misleading light, suggesting certain behaviors were common among its professionals. This included sharing inappropriate content involving Stevie J, which was meant to manipulate Jones's perceptions and make him feel that certain actions were normalized in the industry. Moreover, Mr. Combs made promises about advancing Jones's career in exchange for adopting certain behaviors, further exploiting Jones's aspirations and respect for industry figures like Stevie J. This situation highlights a misuse of power and trust, aiming to influence Jones in ways that were completely unrelated to his professional development or interests. Moving forward in the lawsuit narrative, on a warm evening of July 2nd, 2023 in California, an event took place at Mr. Combs's residence. This event, described as a listening party, gathered various individuals including a notable R&B artist, Jay Combs, and other guests. Among the attendees were people whose presence would later become a point of contention. As the evening began at 7 p.m., Mr. Combs had made arrangements for additional guests to join, which included professionals for entertainment. Amid the adult crowd, there were also younger attendees, some of whom were under 16, blending in without their ages being verified. The party atmosphere was enhanced with the serving of De Leon liquor. It was suggested that this liquor was not just for enjoyment, but had been altered, which raised concerns among some guests. The very verification of the age of younger attendees was overlooked, a detail that became increasingly concerning as the night went on. Mr. Jones, a guest of the party, found himself in a predicament when he wished to leave but was persuaded to stay by Mr. Combs, who even took measures to ensure his stay. As the night progressed, Mr. Jones experienced discomfort and disorientation, culminating in him waking up the following morning in an unexpected situation, which marked
marked a turning point in the narrative of the evening. Then there's another story about Mr. Jones and his professional journey with Mr. Combs, marked by an unspoken agreement of work for hire. Throughout their time together, Mr. Jones contributed significantly, living with Mr. Combs and producing music that would later resonate with many. Despite his dedication and the value he added, Mr. Jones found himself uncompensated for his efforts, an issue that sits at the core of this dispute. Rodney Jones made a big mark on the Love albums, getting his name listed as a producer on hit tracks like Deliver Me, Stay Part One, and Reaching. His hard work and creative touch were key to the album's success, showing just how much he put into the project. But even though Jones's efforts helped make the album a hit and brought in money and fame for Diddy and others involved, he didn't see the fair pay he was hoping for. It felt like his huge contribution was being overlooked, especially when it came down to the money side of things. This left him feeling shortchanged, while others enjoyed the rewards of his work. Jones didn't just let this slide. He believed strongly in the value of his work and wanted to sort things out fairly. He tried to talk it over, aiming to get a fair share for all the time and creativity he poured into the album, but the talks didn't go well. The offers he got didn't match up with his expectations or the effort he knew he'd put in. This gap between what he was offered and what he felt he deserved really showed him how much his work wasn't being properly recognized or valued. Feeling stuck and undervalued, Jones decided to take his fight for fairness public, hoping to get the support and recognition he deserved. He shared his story on social media, calling for a fair deal, but instead of solving things, this move led to threatening messages, making an already tough situation even harder. Lastly, the lawsuit brings to light some very serious concerns about how Mr. Jones felt working with Mr. Combs. It tells us about a situation where Mr. Combs was really tough and demanding, hardly ever taking no for an answer. This kind of pressure made Mr. Jones feel really uneasy. Especially Especially when Mr. Combs would make threats or show off his guns, hinting he could get away with pretty much anything. These moments weren't just for show, they made Mr. Jones worry about what could happen to him if he didn't follow along. All of this made Mr. Jones feel stuck. He was in a spot where saying no to Mr. Combs didn't feel like an option, leaving him to deal with a lot of fear and worry. This part of the lawsuit really highlights the heavy atmosphere Mr. Jones was under, feeling controlled and without much freedom to make his own choices. Alright folks, that's everything we've got on the lawsuit involving Diddy. It's quite the story, with all sorts of of claims and accusations being thrown around. You've got to wonder, is there real substance behind all these allegations? Or could this just be someone trying to make a name for themselves at Diddy's expense? And then there's the big question, what's going to happen next? Will Diddy find himself in hot water legally? Or is he going to manage to dodge any serious fallout from this? What do you guys think? Drop your opinions in the comments and let's talk about it. See you all in the next video.